the extrapolation together with interest rate risk may create a huge impact on solvency ratios. And that's why there are some also that the Commission and IOPA proposed some smoothing mechanism and uh, transition period for which these will be implemented. You're listening to Rethinking Insurance, a podcast series from WTW, where we discuss the issues facing PNC, life, and composite insurers around the globe, as well as exploring the latest tools, techniques, and innovations that will help you rethink insurance. Hello and welcome to Rethinking Insurance. I'm your host, Dina Team, and today I'm delighted to be joined by my guest, Miroslav Kodaska. Hey, Miroslav. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks. You're a consultant in Willis Watson's insurance consulting and technology business in our Prague office. And I think prior to working at Willis Watson and KPMG, you worked at the Czech National Bank for seven years. Uh, and I think you drafted insurance regulations and took part in negotiations of solvency two at the Czech um, national level, but also at the European level. And I think with your economics and finance background and your insurance regulation expertise generally, you're an excellent partner for today's discussion, which is on the proposed changes to the solvency two framework. Um, yep. And before we get into that, I googled your name, and besides some Willis Watson search results, I found Miroslav Kutashka, an actor who I think only played in a Czech cooking show in 2012, um, <laughs> called Don't Boil the Water, if Google Translate isn't lying. <laughs> um, well, is that something that uh, you wish people would find when Googling your name, or did you have other plans? Well, honestly... Um, I, I don't really care what, what people find about me on the internet. So uh, obviously this is not me because those people who know me, they know that I don't cook and I can't cook. So obviously <laughs> they, they, they know it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Great. Let's move on to today's topic. Um, in September of 2021, the European Commission published a proposal for the review of the Solvency 2 Directive. And once the proposed directive has been agreed by all stakeholders, it will enter force in 2023 or 2024. And then it would be another one and a half years before they are applied in individual member states. Merrick, can you just describe the process in a bit more detail and sort of tell us where we are in that process? Okay, so what you mentioned that the commission proposal for the directive is some way, uh, somewhat halfway through uh the whole process of uh solvency to review because the commission asked aopa for its advice uh for this review already in 2019 i think with about 19 topics to be to be done and and uh this review is happening basically for two reasons first of all the commission has a legal obligation to review the legislation after five years of uh, being in force and there are several topics which um, which the Commission uh, has in, in the legislation that it has to review, uh, such as long-term guarantees or group uh, supervision and so on. And then there are also some market developments uh, and, and other developments also political, such as uh, ESG uh, or sustainable finance. And that's what is taken into account in this review. So that was the call for advice, so-called um, uh, request for, for advice for AOPA. Then AOPA worked on this advice, which took uh, a little bit longer than expected because um, it's not that the topics were too technical, but we also got COVID and we also got some changing situation on the market. So AOPA did also some impact assessment uh, on, on the proposals that they that they submitted. The whole suggestion from AOPA is going through um, public consultations, which also take time. And then the commission proposal um, in September last year uh, is basically based on, on the advice from AOPA and also uh, from um, European Commission own consultation. So this is the half of the process which we already know of and um, now we are looking ahead for the things to come and uh, in, in this process 
we have the European bodies that need to find a compromise. And by the bodies, I mean uh, the European Commission with the proposal. And then we have the, the Council and then we have the European Parliament, which they both study the proposal by the Commission. They need to come up with their opinion on the Commission proposal. And once they have uh, their opinions, um, uh, the so-called trialogue uh, begins between the Commission, uh, Council and uh, European Parliament. And this is something uh, which we can probably expect uh, in the second half of this year, because as I was um, doing my study yesterday, I still haven't found any official document that the Council or the Parliament already uh, reached a conclusion on their opinion. So, so this is something to, to um, uh, look forward to, uh, uh, hopefully look forward to, and uh, see, see how the, the compromise will look like in, in the future. And once we have the compromise with the trilogue, then obviously the member states need to have some time to implement in their legislation. Right, and, and just to note that those proposed changes uh, don't hold for the UK, right? I think the sovereignty regimes in the UK versus the rest of Europe seem to be rather diverging further, with uh, the EU proposal suggesting more rules and codification. I think the UK is trying to really reduce those rules and codifications. Um, but this is probably subject to another podcast, unless you've got any thoughts on that. The inside knowledge. Uh, no, you're completely correct. And uh, I think it was just last week or the week before when uh, uh, basically the, the British government or the Prudential Regulation Authority came out with the final proposal based on the consultation and also on the quantitative impact study. But the topics of the review are a little bit different uh, in, in UK than they are in, in uh, the European Union. Right. OK. So what are the main areas of change for the um, in the EU, EU proposal? I think I mentioned already a few um, because AOPA and the regulators and the industry has been have been talking quite for some time about the long term guarantee measures. Uh, those are the measures that were put in place basically after the last financial crisis and its impact. So this was something that was put into a proposal in 2012 to 14, such as volatility adjustment, matching adjustment, some transitional measures um, on the technical provisions and the yield curves. And this is a huge topic because this is something that was devised to help insurers to, let's say, smoothen the volatility of uh, the short-term market fluctuations and these impacts on, on valuation of uh, technical provisions of the insurance industry, which is much more long-term than, um, uh, than these short-term fluctuations. And uh, that's why this is, this is being reviewed, because the Commission said this is a big topic and in five years we shall review how these measures worked, whether they worked fine for the industry, whether they worked the way they were designed and helped to smoothen these, these fluctuations. And I think that, that they have proven somehow they, they work quite fine. Another big topic, uh, which is something the industry has been calling for um, since Solvency 2 went live in 2016, is the risk margin. And uh, here we see that um, uh, we, we can expect some, some um, let's say, decrease in, in the risk margin. Um, obviously, the UK uh, insurers who had uh, annuity business and, and um, uh, long-term uh, long uh, liabilities towards their, their customers uh, were most vocal about the risk margin, but we see that the development uh, also in, in the EU states now uh, is becoming um, in a way that, that the, the risk margin will be lowered, which will free up some, some capital for, uh, for the insurance companies. And another big uh, thing that is being reviewed, it's basically the um, uh, capital charge for interest rate risk. And I think this is uh, getting more and more attention I think already in 2016, uh, AOPA in their risk dashboards uh, said that, that we are basically 
going through a long uh, long lasting environment of low yield uh, of low yields and and basically what impact it has on on insurance industry and particular life insurance industry and and uh, it's been five years and and uh, the rates uh, came even or even decreased um over those five years so so uh, we are going really uh, for 10 years with, with low interest rates and and the life insurers have may have promised um some significantly higher uh returns to their policyholders so now um having in mind that, that the risk rates were so low and also became even negative which was not foreseen uh, when solvency 2 was designed now that the big change is uh, basically changing the approach how to calculate and how to account for these low interest uh, uh, interest rates and also for negative interest rates but unlike the risk margin uh, this goes the other direction so basically in, it increases the capital requirements for the insurers i think these are the main uh, the main topics of the review. And so do you think the um, increase in the capital charge for interest rate, is that um, going to be the main concern for most insurers or are there other areas for, for concern? Um, I think so, uh, because um, it, it, AOPA impact assessments proved that this has major impact on, on the solvency ratio or on, on the capital surplus. And also this needs to be somehow taken into account also with the extrapolation. Um, uh, extrapolation may be seen as part of the long term guarantee measures. AOPA suggested uh, some um, um, alternative method and, and the extrapolation means that basically how to derive long term uh, curves to be used for discounting because the, these discount curves are derived from um, traded uh, 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 traded instruments on the financial markets and you know that, that beyond let's say 20 or 30 years the liquidity of these instruments is um, uh, decreasing and that's why the, the rates for such long-term uh, outlook are not so not so uh, let's say reliable and that's why we we need to extrapolate uh, for for this period and this new method again brings some uh, changes and brings some huge impacts on insurers balance sheets basically on, on valuation of uh, the technical provision in particular again for life insurers so basically the extrapolation together with interest rate risk may create a huge impact on solvency ratios and that's why there are some also that the commission and EOPA proposed some smoothing mechanism and uh, transition period for which these will be implemented so when we talked about the the outlook that um, solvency to review might come into force in the member states let's say in 2024 or 2025 then we'll have definitely additional years uh, in which the companies should be preparing for this and basically uh, smoothen the transition to the new to the new calculations and i think this transition period as it is proposed is until 2032 okay wow okay so in a nine year <laughs> period yeah, exactly. Because the, the thing already now, as I talked, that they're in, in the uh, long term guarantee measures uh, for which uh, which were included in the in the solvency to directive. There are these transitional measures on uh, technical provisions and on the risk free rates. And these transitional measures were at 